Hey, what's up everyone? It's Wally and today I'm gonna to show you another Chinatown classic called black pepper beef. Okay, so this dish doesn't really have traditional Chinese roots, but it came from Hong Kong and the uh, Hong Kong Chinese uh, turned it into their own special little thing. So then a lot of the Hong Kong chefs, uh, they left Hong Kong, they went to like Canada, USA, and then they shared their delicious recipe uh, with the customers. So there are people that ask me, uh, what is the best uh, cut of beef that they should use for these type of stir fries? Now for me at home, to make it simple, I just say, hey, you know what? Just purchase the best cut of beef that you know you can afford. But if you want to know what a mom and pop uh, traditional Chinese restaurant uses, then the answer is it is flank steak. My mom and dad, they always bought flank steak whenever they made stir fries. And sometimes you don't even have to ask the butcher, uh, the Chinese butcher that is, they'll automatically assume that it is flank steak unless you tell them that you're making a soup. In mom and pop Chinese restaurants, they use flank steak because it is affordable. Because if they use sirloin or ribeyes, they'll have to charge you more money, right? Because Chinese restaurants are traditionally known for large portions and affordable prices. And I think it's usually those big shishi, fufu, you know, fancy Chinese restaurants uh, that would use sirloin or ribeyes. And that's why they get to charge you uh, the money that they charge you. But keep in mind though that flank steak, which comes from the abdominal part of a cow, uh, even though it's cheaper and more affordable, it doesn't mean that the, the quality of the beef is cheap. It just means that you need to do a little bit of more, you know, finagling uh, to make the beef more uh, tender and more edible. But my overall opinion is that ribeyes and sirloins, uh, they're, they're better off for the barbecue grill. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's get to it. So right here, I've got 400 grams of flank steak. So I mentioned that there are a couple of ways that you can do uh, to flank steak to make it more uh, tender and tasty. First of all, is to cut it properly. You have to cut the beef against the grain. What does that mean? So if you look at a chunk of flank steak, you see these fibers that run across. Now if you cut your beef along that fiber, then that beef is gonna to be tough. However, if you cut it down that fiber, then the meat fibers are shortened, which will result in a much more uh, tender beef. And then when you cut the beef, the thinner it is, the more tender it's gonna be. However, you can't cut the meat too thin because it's just gonna overcook. And if you cut it too thick, then it might be a little bit more tough. So you need to cut into what's called the Goldilocks zone. Cut it down to about like two to three centimeters. Wait, let me check my ruler. Yeah, cut it down to about two to three centimeters uh, and that's pretty much the Goldilocks zone. Now also Chinese restaurants, they use baking soda to tenderize their beef, but I'm not gonna use baking soda uh, for this recipe. Uh, there's something else that I'm gonna do to make this beef extra juicy and tender, which I'll show you later, okay? Okay, to make this beef more tasty, we're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of light soy sauce, one tablespoon of Shaoxing Chinese cooking wine. Just give it a mix first. And then we add a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch. So let's get to the other ingredients. Right here, I've got some bell peppers. Uh, I bought some multicolor ones. That's the way they sell them at my local market. You just need about like maybe like one and a half of whole peppers. It doesn't have to be multicolor peppers. Use whatever peppers that you've got. Uh, don't worry about it. And we're also gonna need one whole medium-sized onion. Just cut it into these little thick strips or cut it thinner if you like. I like my onions to be really thick. You also need three or four garlics that are minced, uh, just like that. The next super important ingredient is the black pepper. I mean, after all, it's named black pepper beef, right? So for this recipe, I highly recommend using fresh peppercorns. You can crack them yourself like I do with this mortar and pestle, or just use a pepper mill. In my opinion, it's better than those, you know, boxed, uh, you know, ground peppercorn. Uh, these are way, way better. So uh, make sure you get this uh, if you really want to make this dish uh, extra tasty. Another tip is to don't grind these peppercorns too fine, okay? You wanna have little bits of discernible pieces of black peppercorn, okay? All right, next up are black pepper sauce. Gonna need one teaspoon of dark soy sauce for color, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, 
One tablespoon of Shaoxing Chinese cooking wine. Two teaspoons of light soy sauce. And one teaspoon of sugar. One tablespoon of cornstarch. And finally, three tablespoons of water. Sorry, my two and a half year old, she's starting to speak now and she calls water, water. There's no more water. There's no more. So since then, I've been calling water, water, and I know it's bad parenting because I don't correct her, so, you know. Now, it is simple to turn this into a vegetarian dish. You can use vegetarian oyster sauce. There's plenty of plant-based uh, proteins out there today in the market that you can use to substitute uh, for beef. Okay, wow. Not a lot of ingredients, right? We're finished. Let's start cooking. All right, so I mentioned in the beginning that I'm gonna show you a way how to make this beef uh, more tasty and tender. And that is by frying it in oil, okay? Now you can stir fry this if you want. Um, I don't think I need to show you guys how to stir fry. I know you guys are all smart. But one of my favorite Chinese restaurants uh, back in the US, uh, their secret was frying their beef. That was it. And it just made it so much more tasty. So that's why for this version of black pepper beef, I'm going to fry my beef to show you guys. Okay, and when my oil is hot enough for frying, I'm gonna add all of the beef. All right, so why fry beef when you can stir fry? Well, for one thing, you know, it's just to mix things up a little bit. And also frying beef, uh, what the heat does uh, with, the oil, with the hot oil is it forces out a lot of the moisture and concentrates the beef flavor. You do have to be careful when you fry beef because there is a lot of moisture and water inside beef. So be careful, folks. All right, that's it. Just a couple of minutes and it should be done. Just remove the beef. And then just pour out the oil. Now the oil that I used was fresh oil, which means that I can use this oil for other stir fries. Okay, on a newly cleaned out wok, I'm gonna add that same oil that I used previously. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of oil when the wok starts to smoke. Throw in the peppers and the onions. Okay, and I'm just gonna cook these vegetables until they shrink a little bit and the onions start to turn a little bit clear. And I'm gonna add it right to the cooked beef. Try to leave as much oil as you can in the wok. All right, with the same wok, I didn't clean this wok out this time. Heat the wok on a medium high, add about a tablespoon of oil, throw in the garlic, and when the garlic becomes fragrant, we add the sauce. Lower the heat to a medium heat and throw in the meat and the peppers. And give it a toss. Take a little pinch of fresh cracked black pepper, sprinkle it in, that's right. That's the real kicker. I've made this dish a lot of times and I know this is gonna be flavorful, 
and tender. Try this out folks, I know you guys will love it. As always, I do make deliveries, I take bitcoins and camels as payment. I'll see you all next time.